into the time. So I'm going to kick off uh, by saying welcome to everybody to our first uh, Women in OR and Analytics uh, networking event. Uh, we have 69 people signed up for this, but so far we have about 30 on the call and no doubt others joining us throughout. So this is uh, Women in OR and Analytics, the OR Society's network, uh, newly created and with a number of very generous sponsors, we're very excited to have supporting us. Um, today is uh, Women in Mathematics Day, so it's particularly appropriate that we're all getting together today to celebrate each other. Uh, the, before, before I go too much further, I know there's only, uh, only half of us here so far, but we do have a poll to try and find out a bit more about the people who are in the room. So Tati, I wonder if you can launch the poll and then, oh, little Miss <laughs> Uh, if you launch the poll, and then we can um, be answering that, if you don't mind, while I carry on talking. So you should find this really quite a simple thing to answer, and Patty will put together the, the responses. And meanwhile, I'll carry on doing the introduction, um, uh, and say that the point of today, and I don't know if you can see this behind the poll, but the first point of today is to talk about some of the issues that are affecting the school, during uh, the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, it's just to make contact with each other, to, uh, you can't see that behind the pole, I shouldn't think, but to network with each other um, and hopefully to actually enjoy ourselves while we're at it. Uh, how are we doing on results? Tati, anything you interested yet? Yes, um, I think 96% of, of answers now, so. Oh, go on then, if you can okay. put it up. Oh, I don't think I can share it on here, sorry. Oh, okay, well, I'll, if you can remove it then uh, from the screen so that we can see clearly uh, the next little bit, which is about the housekeeping. Just to say, uh, if you haven't been automatically muted, uh, which you will have been from time to time, and if you are... Uh, oh, there we are, getting the answers. Yeah. Uh, if, if you are not on mute, please will you mute yourself while somebody else is talking. Um, uh, we have somebody waiting to enter, Amy, I think. Uh, let's have a quick look. Most people are working full time. Whew. And uh, most people are in a household uh, without, uh, with other adults uh, who don't have care needs and, but almost, a strikingly close result is for people who are also caring with other people in their in their households. So I'm just going to stop sharing the results, if we may, and and, and move on. Um, just to uh, the other bits of housekeeping. If you would like to change your name to what you would normally see on your name badge, so your name plus uh, affiliation, for example, then please do. If you're familiar with the bits, how it works on on Zoom. Uh, so can we can we move the um, uh, the poll from the screen now, Tati? Uh, yes, that's been removed. So you probably just need to press the X on the on your screen. I do. Sorry about that. Yeah, and I seem to have got stuck on my right. Um, if you do want to speak when you're in a group uh, and uh, questions have been asked, if you can use the hand raising hand and lowering hand facility, that would be great. Uh, as mentioned, renaming yourself. And the idea of the meeting today when we're in the chatting bit is this chat and house rule, which is you can repeat what you've heard, but you mustn't attribute it to either an end person or the organization that they came from. So that should make the, uh, the chatting more comfortable, I hope. Um, uh, behind the scenes, well, they're not behind the scenes at the moment, not for me anyway. We have uh, Tati McIntosh and Amy Hughes from the OR Society, who hopefully will be fixing any tech problems that we have. We'll be managing the chat, and that's where you can ask either technical questions or if you have any questions for the speakers. And they are recording the shared bits of the uh, presentation, so the plenary speakers. Uh, the programme starts off, though, with scene setting talks from Francis O'Brien who is currently chair of the Women in OR and Analytics Network and is from Wake Business School. And then she'll be followed by Nicola Morrill, who is the OR Society's diversity champion, uh, the OR Society Board's diversity champion, and is a, uh, a experienced practitioner from DSTL. So without further ado, can we hand over then to Francis? Thank you. 
Thanks, Ruth. Uh, let's see now. Hang on, see if I can get this to work. The bit I didn't say is please bear with us, it's new to all of us. Haha, -ha. right, I can see it and I hope you guys can too. So hello, I'm uh, Francis O'Brien. Uh, in my talk today I'm going to share with you a little bit about what my life looked like before lockdown, how it looks now, what's working, where I'm struggling and what I'm starting to think about post lockdown. Now, when I was thinking about my life, I thought actually it, it neatly, neatly divides into three categories, work, home family, and my social life. So that's how I'm gonna structure uh, the next two slides. So life before lockdown. Uh, my working life, uh, at Warwick Business School, I travel most days to work by car. Uh, however, as an academic, I'm used to working from home. And in recent months, I've been working from home quite a lot. Uh, I've had some issues with my daughter who's not been to school since November. So actually going into lockdown wasn't a huge shock to me in terms of working from home. As you can see, I'm in my kitchen. This is where I like to work. I've always worked here, found it very comfortable. I don't have a separate study um, that I can work in. As you see, we're in a, a small end of terrace type property, so we don't have many spare rooms. In fact, the only spare room we have is where my son's drum kit is. And I didn't fancy going into the bedroom and I'd been booted out of the living room where my daughter is watching the telly. So I'm used to teaching um, online at, at Warwick as well because we run there a distance learning programme uh, and I'm also used to electronic marking. So life before lockdown was quite blended at, at work in terms of both face-to-face -face teaching, going in for meetings, meeting students, etc but also um, a bit of online uh, working. At home um, I'm here I'm a single parent I have two teenage kids both still at school or college um, they're quite reliant on me to ferry them around everywhere I'm the, 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 the taxi of mum. We all love music as you can see here my my son is giving my daughter an electric guitar lesson which pleases the neighbours no end as does his drum playing. Um, I also have quite an active social life. I sing in a barber shop that's the, the all the ladies in blue there. We're called Silver Lining and we meet once a week. The Circle is my church where I sing on a, a Saturday evening at mass and that's me dancing. I love the music of the 1950s uh, and go out dancing and to festivals fairly regularly. Um, Facebook is there because my social life is largely organised through, um, through the events and, and the, the facilities that, that Facebook has. So the key features of this life before lockdown is it was quite siloed. All of these things were quite separate, neatly separated, um, but required a physical presence and lots of mobility facilitated by my car. So where am I now? Um, well, some things haven't changed very much and others have seen quite radical change. So the content of my work is pretty much the same in the sense that I still have meetings, I do teaching, I do my research and I do admin. The key difference is it's all now online. Home life isn't too different, except that the kids are here all day and don't go out except to exercise. However, some things don't change. My teenage son only leaves his bedroom when he wants to uh, um, go to the bathroom or come down and get food. Um, but I guess that's quite typical for a teenage boy. Um, the rooms in the house have, have host multiple activities. So the kitchen has always been a place for food and working, but it's now where I do my dancing on a Saturday night. Um, when I attend Facebook live broadcasts by various DJ friends that they do at the weekend and, and throughout the week. The living room now hosts the exercise bike that I bought thinking that the kids might do some exercise. My, son, my son's been on it I think twice. My daughter goes on it quite regularly and, and she's also doing some uh, um, thing on YouTube where she's following um, some person and does all her little routines on the, on the living room floor. My social life I think has seen the most radical change in that everything is now virtual uh, via Zoom meetings, live streaming of the church services and, and via Facebook. 
Now, I came across an interesting piece on the BBC called Things That Have Kept Us Going In Lockdown, and this inspired me to reflect on my list. I've already spoken about work, which is all virtual, and my socialising, which again is all virtual. But there were some other things on the list that uh, I've reflected about. We spend more time with the people that we live with. I've had quite a few music sessions with the kids, sometimes sitting in the garden when the weather's been good, then playing the guitars and singing, and, and I've enjoyed that, as have the neighbours. We're watching a bit more TV, films and box, box sets in particular. The kids persuaded me some time ago, long before lockdown, to switch to Virgin Media as it gave us better internet speeds. Uh, and also to get Netflix, so we're not short on viewing options at the moment. Our exercise lives are different. We exercise both inside the house and outside the house. We take the dog for a walk every day. We do much more around the house, much more cooking than perhaps we did before. Um, at my weekends, I've spent my time tidying up, trying to declutter and doing things like organising family photos that I've been meaning to do for years but haven't quite got round to. Um, we've created some new routines and I think this has been really important for my mental health as well as that of the kids. So for example I get up a bit later than I would normally and I have a nice relaxed breakfast sitting at the table reading emails and I have some freshly brewed coffee whereas before breakfast was very much a, a grab and go thing on the run running the kids to the station to school and then rushing into work. I've also taken up uh, some DIY and learning new things. I've always wanted to hula hoop and, I, and I, my, 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 my target is to beat my son's 200 hula hoops. I'm up to 70 so I'm, I'm doing really well with that new hobby. I've also started to learn the bass guitar and I can do a very basic 12 bar blues on the bass. I've had to do some DIY around the house but as a single parent you get used to that so in some ways that's nothing new. Um, I've, I've felt a strong desire to help others, feeling very privileged being in full-time work with my full-time salary coming in. Um, I do volunteering. I just had a phone call before this meeting started, hooking me up via phone uh, with somebody through a good neighbours scheme that Coventry runs. Um, I've tried where I can to support food banks and other local charities financially or, you know, or with food items. Our shopping habits have, have and haven't changed. Uh, I was self-isolating in March, so I had to go online to buy, buy food and use uh, local shops. One big thing I've noticed with shopping, we don't buy as much fast food, and boy, does that save some money um, over the month. So what issues have I faced? Uh, for me, uh, keeping fit's been a really big thing. Um, I can now get on the exercise bike, so hopefully that will improve. Um, respite um, from caring responsibilities. Uh, my mother-in-law used to come over and look after the kids, allowing me to go out dancing until weekends. That doesn't happen anymore, but then I'm not going out, so um, that's not so much of a problem. Really, because we, We're all together 24 hours a day, and we have had our bus stops uh, every now and again. Um, some things have been let slip in order to keep physical and mental health going and in particular the kids school work I've really struggled to um, to get them to do stuff to be honest not to take charge of it I've been quite organized in printing off materials where relevant but getting them to actually do some work has been a real challenge uh, more so for my daughter than my son um, the dog's probably come out the worst of this all because um, she hasn't been able to go to the groomers over the, over the lockdown period and has got massively long claws, which are very sharp. But I'm hoping that that will soon um, be resolved as uh, the groomers is reopening. Now, um, I'm aware, you know, that, that these are very much my experiences, but I know that other people during lockdown have... Um, experience some other issues for example feeling that you don't have good visibility um, at work amongst colleagues particularly for people that are not confident um, speakers or are not confident people. I have teenage kids who are largely self-sufficient in terms of occupying themselves in the day. I expect those of you with different family and caring setups have very different stories to tell there. Or if, if half of us are living with other adults, again, your stories will be very different in terms of how you're balancing uh, your daily lives. Um, finally, I'm sure that 
Uh, there are many of us who know someone who's been ill or has even died during this, this period. And the social distancing imposed in these situations must be really, really hard to bear. So post lockdown, can we even start thinking about the future? To be honest, I haven't. I, I've really been focusing on my present and my immediate future. And I realize that I'm in a really privileged position in this respect. Perhaps this is naive or maybe just pragmatic, but my thoughts about the future are, are quite mixed. On the one hand, I'm looking forward to socializing with people face to face, getting back to work, getting back to singing and dancing. But on the other hand, I'm quite anxious about when is it gonna be really safe to do this, to get into close physical contact with people again. I've also got some concerns about how am I going to get the kids re-engaging with school. My son, I expect, can't wait to go back to college, but my daughter, who suffers from anxiety, really is quite worried about going back, having missed so much work. So to end on a positive note, I'm starting to think about how I might look forward to this world post-lockdown and whether some of my recent experiences are things I want to take with me or whether there's some that I might want to leave behind. And I'll leave you with the thought that hula hooping is right at the top of my list. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Francis. I think that was, that was really, uh, an interesting way and fascinating way of, of setting us going on this on this uh, uh, event. Uh, and I'm going to hand it straight over because we don't, I'm afraid we don't have time for questions at this stage, straight over to Nicola uh, to follow up. Thank you, Nicola. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm just going to set myself a little timer. So go. Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm going to share um, my lockdown journey um, so far with you, um, explored through some different diversity lenses, um, just to get just to get us thinking really. So each slide that I have has a bundle of information that I'm going to talk to, which kind of relates to me, and then I've I found some quotes that are broadly related to the theme that I'm talking about because I'm very conscious that. This is my it's my journey and so they're my lenses and they're not they're not the same um, for everybody. So firstly, I think um, I just wanted to speak a little bit as a diversity champion. So don't have much to say um, given that the time is short. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to trial virtual events and I'm delighted that um, Warren is kind of doing this event and um, a lot of the feedback that we receive from people. Um, to help us be more inclusive is to have more online sessions. So I'd be really intrigued um, and I'm hopeful that there are people joining us today that perhaps haven't been able to come to some of our physical sessions. Um, okay, and so I hope that via Francis and myself, and then also when we go into the breakout groups that you find something that you can kind of relate to um, and including in these quotes that will kind of help you um, on, on your lockdown journey. Okay, so my journey. Um, so the first one I thought that I would share, which I move the screen because I can't see, um, is about work. So again, I'm very fortunate that, I, that I'm working. Um, I'm working as a practitioner, which straight away is perhaps different to some experiences you may be having as an academic. Similar to Francis, um, I have been working from home roughly about two days a week generally um, and my work that I do just now adapts very well to remote working but I do reflect back and think in previous roles where I've maybe led teams, um, seven teams, groups of 80 people, how my life might be quite different just now in my experience compared to um, what it is as a technical person. So I as a result have had a very easy transition into increasing the number of days that I work from home. That's really been facilitated by the organisation that I work with who are really technically well equipped. So we all have laptops. I already had a remote working capability so that just enables it um, 
quite easily and we have recently um, invested in something called Jabber so it's a video conferencing facility so actually to do meetings um, over the telephone with multiple people or video conferencing or sharing screens we're all we're technically enabled to do that and so I think probably very thankful um, that, that that's kind of come into our organisation because otherwise it would again be a very different experience and I've got a supportive line manager which I think is um, really important as well kind of irrespective of being an academic or a practitioner um, a positive is that it's much easier to reach people you need to talk to because everybody's at home so all these meetings that you've been trying to have for the longest time and people you've been trying to chat to you can you can get them it's great um, although I, I'm, I'm noticing that zoom is now taking over so everybody's in video conferencing so that 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 bonus may go away um, I also notice um, that there's an amazing amount of virtual learning um, and development out there for us to use I'd love to have the time but for me that's part of maybe my take forward and um, because I don't normally work on a Wednesday I am just now um, and I may spend some of my time doing some of that learning and um, I'm working hard to differentiate my work and home space and the work and school space so that at the end of the day um, work is over and then we're in kind of home mode and so sometimes that's changing clothes lots of different things we'll start the morning by going around the garden for a walk it simulates kind of traveling somewhere and um, and then i normally um work 30 hours a week and i have to say that that's just in the last year before that i've always worked full time and i'm quite grateful that it's the 30 hours that i've been trying to manage um, but then if we go into my other lane, my next lane, which is the work as a mother, you'll see the first bullet there is, um, I, ha I had a, I had to look at everything that I might need to do, given that I was now homeschooling, and um, didn't feel that I would be able to do all of those hours. So again, supportive line manager, and I reduced, reduced out my hours using my annual leave and some support from work a little bit to squeeze it all in. So doing some homeschooling, and again, the, the preparation of the school helps a lot with that um, and some days I, I do really well and others not so year three doing different support to year seven year seven is more about resilience and emotional support and year three is a bit of that and kind of we were doing fractions the other day and um, today we're on um, polygons um, so we've worked very hard in establishing a routine as close to normal for the kids because that's really important for them um, particular challenges and I'm sure this isn't just about being a mother though it's on that page is the sharing the bandwidth so we have maybe four computers going on at the same time we have Joe Wicks so we'll have streaming and um, so hopefully not many people are on the computer just now and this will all this will all go fine and um, and an observation is that it's much easier to give out cuddles when I'm not on a video conference and I'm not leading the meeting but I'm just a participant because you never quite know when when a cuddle is needed okay another one and again Francis you talked a bit in the, about a bit on this and that's health and well-being and really very early on deciding to prioritize um, good mental health for the family um, and for myself and a lot of what we've done is kind of based around doing that because it enables me to deliver the work and to deliver the homeschooling um, and so I I run already, um, but I'm doing kind of more walking. So every lunchtime, the girls and I will go out. I've had an attempt to um, some virtual yoga classes, um, maybe maintain some of that. The kiddies cosmic yoga, perhaps not. That's yoga when you're the Easter bunny or you're a unicorn. And I've done some dance classes um, online as well. Oh, sorry, there we go. That's my reminder. Um, and then making sure that we've got a balanced diet and so it would be so lovely just to pick out and lots of stuff but we're not doing that we're kind of we're having a he healthy diet um, and we're maintaining a good amount of sleep except over the past two weekends when we've been camping and um, but that that's another story um, and similar lots of zooming of family and friends and some of that is about supporting people that are kind of perhaps isolated and just checking in with them and I have to say um, my dog as well, Francis, is not um, getting the grooming, but he's very happy because Welsh Springer Spaniels are known as Velcro dogs. 
so he goes everywhere I go so he's he sleeps beside me every day and just now he's just down there having a little sleep um, while I'm chatting and then just another another um, lens um, is about the introversion extroversion spectrum or and we're, we're all we're all different and our experiences I guess are different and so for me I'm particularly enjoying the quietness and the ability to be at home and to do lots lots of thinking and focusing on my tasks so I'm kind of having quite a productive time still engaging with people but in in a different way and so that sh shaping my experience as well so if I just conclude um, I have to say that my journey on the whole has been um, fairly positive so far um, and I guess I've pinpointed different things that are um, leading to that. Obviously it's not without challenge but in the grand scheme of things there are many people that are in a far worse situation um, than, than I am. Um, and so the different lenses kind of help explain um, and I'm also interested in what the new normal kind of might be and um, thinking about what that is, kind of what what I'll take forward as well Francis and kind of what, what I'll leave behind and so I'll be interested to hear as we kind of go into the breakout groups for kind of what lenses that are shaping kind of people's experiences of the lockdown journey um, and that's me thank you stop share there you go okay back to you Ruth thank you very much I should just try and uh, return to my screen here uh, to say uh, what happens now. So uh, hopefully you've had um, things that, that have touched a few chords there from, from both Francis and Nicola. They certainly touched a few chords from me and all my children are, are now grown up, uh, though some of them are boomeranged back uh, and um, uh, challenging my introversion, extroversion spectrum, any position on, on the spectrum anyway. Um, so we now move on to the breakout groups uh, and here I have to, this is, this is really experimental for all of us. Uh, we are uh, for the first time trying online breakout groups with online facilitators, uh, none of whom have, uh, as far as I know, ever done this before. Uh, and we hope that we've allocated you to the group that you either first or second chose when you registered. Uh, Francis will be leading the question that uh, you've heard already touching on. Are you working from home or just trying to work whilst at home? Christina, and I'm hoping that uh, these people have managed to join us, Amy, so let me know if we have a problem. Christina will be taking remote teams, tips for managing, collaborating. Sue, uh, the impact of lockdown on development and progression. Nadia, uh, same, that was the most popular workshop. And rather than having a large workshop, we decided to set up two smaller ones. Uh, Sophie, uh, tips for surviving lockdown. I will be looking at uh, or leading, uh, inviting other people to look at do women hit harder than men. Uh, Mary, looking at fairness during lockdown issues and what we do to help. Uh, and Nicola, what next? Where are we going? Uh, and finally, Sonia uh, will be the only uh, actually professional question among all of these uh, of personal or interpersonal skills questions, which is how could or should the OR community be contributing in the current circumstances. So what happens now is that Amy will uh, uh, click a button which will uh, uh, set up something appearing on your screen, you'll blank, blank out us uh, and you will see some messages and be invited to click join at some point. As I say, we hope it all works and bear with us. Uh, it, and please be patient. I know we're slightly behind time already, but we're going to try and allow the full half hour for the workshops. Uh, so I think that'll be the workshops will start now and or in a minute and finish at five o'clock. Uh, please don't uh, leave the meeting accidentally. You may not get back in. And the biggest point of this um, uh, this this whole event is to enjoy it. I hope you all enjoyed those sessions. I'm going to ask each of the facilitators either to feedback or to nominate somebody from their group who's going to feedback. So uh, can I start? I'm just going to go around my screen as I see. So can we start with Mary? Uh, would you like to tell us which group you are? You've got about one minute to, uh, to do the, the feedback, maybe 90 seconds. Uh, if somebody will unmute you, yeah. I've unmuted myself. Hi. 
Uh, yeah, so um, we were talking about fairness during lockdown. Um, a lot of us are feeling pretty privileged because we are still being paid and we have, have relatively good circumstances generally. Um, so the question is, what issues are there? Uh, how do we help those who are not uh, in our situation? Uh, so we had quite an interesting discussion um, about sort of how people had wanted to help. Uh, not not just people in the discussion, but people they knew um, had volunteered and had maybe or maybe not had those sort of offers picked up. So there's certainly sort of volunteering either at a sort of grassroots local level or at a national level, different national schemes, local schemes. There's a bit of a tension between being able to set up a local organisation to meet people's immediate needs, say in lockdown, compared with waiting for a bigger organisation, the council or a big charity to, to be aware of those needs. So that sort of tension between quick but possibly a bit dodgy GDPR wise and maybe a bit more organised but they're, they're not there yet. So that's sort of a bit of a tension. I asked whether people felt guilty and I think the feeling was no more sort of lucky and angry about the inequalities that they were seeing um, played out. And in terms of what we can do, we talked about supporting local businesses mm. online and in person, reaching out to people on the edge of your social networks, um, talking to people, checking, checking in with people. Um, and, and possibly in terms of OR, or obviously the volunteering that I mentioned before, in terms of OR, maybe we could, um, you know, do some pro bono work for, uh, in relation to, um, these sort of charities and, and, and things that people that might need help in this place. It was great. Anybody, thanks very much, Mary. Is there anybody from your group who would like to add to any of that? And I, I don't know, uh, it, could you just raise your hand so that Amy can see you if you would like to speak? Or maybe even I can see you. No, I can't. About five and eat all the time all day. Need, need the constant attention. Um, it's difficult to concentrate on things. Um, you, you really need somebody to help to support the child and if you're lucky and have someone else working at home that uh, that, that can help a lot. Not sure it would have worked mm -hmm. with my family because uh, the, I don't think the other half would particularly have enjoyed that particular role but we shall see. Um, we felt that um, uh, women do seem to have a, a sense of responsibility and get the job done and um, that isn't so much a concern as uh, I think that needs to go in the opportunities list. I put it in the wrong place, sorry. I'll come back to that one. Um, I think one of the things that's a concern is that um, you can miss offline discussions in the margins of meetings, although you can have very helpful on, uh, online meetings. You don't develop the relationships and valuable contacts offline, which um, I know I certainly my career I found terribly useful. And you pick up the hints as to what's going on. You chat to one or two people round in the margins of a meeting. Um, and the other thing you can't do is really watch the body language of people around the table and um, pick up the, the vibes as to when somebody's looking a bit bored. It's not so easy to do that online, I think it is, um, uh, which can, can affect your ability to show yourself in a good light. Um, firms may hire fewer staff in future, so it's going to be harder for everyone to get jobs, or could be, um, especially for those who have families and perhaps um, not being able to show that they work as much as they would have done had they actually been in the office for a long period. Um, the opportunities are to have more quality time with the family and make, make um, the family a happier place so you become a happier person at work. Um, uh, there's more learning opportunities, self-development opportunities. Um, a chance to shine in the new circumstances and be seen as a, an innovative team player um, who gets the job done. Um, so I was saying earlier about having a sense of responsibility that women seem to be particularly good at. Um, be seen as good at juggling lots of different things uh, which can be valuable in a career. And uh, you might also have time to look for a new job and study the job market and have interviews online so nobody in the office knows you're missing to oh, attend interviews. That's good. <laughs> I think that if, if my team thinks I've left anything out, then do please chip in. I think they're um, all muted, uh, so uh, they can't. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's right. This is power. I'm going to move on then to uh, to Nadia, who was uh, had a similar official topic, and be interesting to see if your discussion went in different directions. Thanks ever so much, Sue. Uh, uh, yes. Um, what, what I'm going to do, uh, uh, I'll try to share a few slides because I have to say, like Sue, my handwriting is not very good, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, just so what I did was, you know, I tried really to. Uh, to use, uh, you know, just uh, to, to compile some slides. Uh, thank you to, to my uh, uh, group members. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, um, a couple of items uh, we did discuss about uh, today's uh, Guardian's uh, article. Apparently, when it comes to academia, uh, female academics are not as productive uh, during the crisis as uh, male academics. Uh, and uh, at the same time, in the public sector, there is another report on diversity, uh, but this is not really published uh, yet, uh, and uh, it raises many issues about, uh, you know, just like career progression uh, in uh, the sector. Uh, but, but uh, you know, just a couple of more points. It's very difficult to combine a full-time job with childcare responsibilities, uh, and. Um, uh, some people feel that uh, it's very, very difficult to have this kind of routine that, uh, you know, just uh, we mentioned before, yeah, and keep it to a nine to five uh, schedule. Um, when it comes to risks, um, we all have our own brand, and every day, you know, we're trying to promote our brand and make it more likable to friends and family. But at the same time, we have a brand at work. And women, you know, just we don't appear to be very good at promoting uh, at our, our own brand. And also to show off to people, you know, just uh, what we're really worth. Uh, in some places, there are no opportunities now for career progression uh, because uh, something that they have flagged is that um, promotions are on hold. It's not only that our lives are on hold, uh, but career opportunities uh, might be on hold too. Uh, but I have to say overall, uh, as a group, we focused on the positives. So we were a half um, full kind of uh, glass group. Uh, and because we all feel that now it is easier to attend online events and conferences, how many of us would have had the opportunity to attend an OR event in London, in Birmingham, in Manchester? Um, uh, also, you know, just uh, many of us, we're trying uh, really to enhance our social media presence, maybe contribute to Twitter discussions, um, LinkedIn. Um, another bit is, um, uh, for those of us who prefer to work at home anyway, it is easier to increase our visibility. It is easier for some people to contribute to online discussions as opposed to face-to-face -face discussions. And in some places, the positive is that uh, it's back, you know, business as usual. So some new jobs are, are being opened to people. So we try to really to finish on a positive. That's great. Thanks ever so much, Nadia and Nadia's group. Uh, and can we move on to Christina? Christina, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Do you want to stop screen sharing and then? Ah, oh, yeah. It's I mean, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, we actually yeah, had a good discussion um, about some of the challenges of remotely managing teams and working with teams. Had some good tips that I'm now going to share very briefly. Um, one is having like buddies. So each team member has a buddy and then you just check in every day by text, especially um, for us, we found that people are living on their own. Um, it's just a way of making sure they're okay, both you know, in terms of mental health, but also physical health, if they get sick, that someone knows about it and can help, especially for people whose families might not be anywhere near them. Um, someone had this great idea of having, designating a day of the week, which is a no Zoom day, to give people a break from uh, video conferencing, which I actually think is great, and I know some of my team will enjoy very much. Um, we had quite a bit of discussion about actually how different team members' communication preferences is quite different in lockdown. Some people prefer WhatsApp, some people prefer phone calls, some prefer video conferencing, um, and and how you try and accommodate that because um, in a way that you can still stay productive and stay in touch. And how you and actually how how would we document that? And how do we know how people prefer to communicate? Um, and then some little things like, you know, can we start thinking about time limits for meetings? I think 
you know, there's this issue where if you book a meeting for an hour, it's, it stays for an hour. I find in Zoom, if anything, it goes on longer because no one, it's harder to stop a meeting on a video conference somehow. Um, so I think that's something to kind of take away is can we reduce the time they take and have shorter meetings. Um, and then just little things like kind of finding new ways to bond with your team. So we've got a weekly online Pictionary that people can join if they want. And that's actually been really, really fun and kind of a nice way to stay in touch with people. So I think that about covers it. Oh no, one more thing, which was the challenge of managing people with different needs. So people who have, say, caring responsibilities as people who don't are working very different hours and having very different experiences of lockdown and how you keep team cohesion in that circumstance. And actually for the people that are working really long hours, how you stop people working. And that's quite a challenge for people kind of actually stop, you have to say stop working. So for one of our postdocs, we have to literally just say, you're not working today. It's just, you have to take the day off. And that's kind of the only thing that would stop it. <laughs> um, and that's it. Yes, that's it now. Thanks very much, Christina. Uh, and you have reminded us we do have to keep this meeting to time. So uh, we have uh, short, sharp, feed, short oh, feedback. Carry on, please. Uh, Sonia. Okay, great. So um, we were the group talking about um, how could or should the OR community be kind of contributing to the, to the crisis. Um, and uh, we had a great conversation. So it was Galina, Lucy and Pamela. And Pamela was from calling from Chile. So that was very nice. Um, and we covered a whole range of things. I mean, firstly, we all thought that clearly OR should have a role. Um, you know, it gets a bit like, you know, it came to being in the war and we felt this was a similar kind of big crisis that OR should be sort of standing up and doing something about. Um, but we found there's kind of lots of challenges to that. Um, it felt like there's a lot of noise around. Um, there's been all sorts of initiatives that people have tried to sign up to, um, funding calls, but also just um, volunteering in, in, in various things to contribute. And that that had been basically come back with nothing. So even though people have put their names forward, um, nothing came back. Um, we felt that um, where there has been more success, it's been where there's been existing relationships anyway, um, where there've been existing collaborations with organizations, um, because that helped to connect you up with the need, because otherwise we felt that there's this big need for operational research to help, but that it was quite hard to match people up to, to where that need was coming from and, and what they could do. Um, we, we felt there were timing issues. So around, obviously there's a lot of sort of very quick firefighting and that maybe operational research would be coming to, into its own in the more sort of medium term where there's a bit more time to foster some of those collaborations and really understand what the needs are and how we can help. Um, there's a lot of talk about research funding and it can be quite challenging for people where sometimes there's examples where they can just convert their existing research um, in, a, in a direction towards COVID and that was, that was a good way to do it. But where you didn't actually have people that could be just brought out of their existing projects or funding readily available, it's quite challenging um, to, to do something. Um, and yeah, lots of just things around our USP and how a lot of the attention, particularly if you look nationally at the media, is around sort of epidemiology or basic science and that perhaps there's less, been less um, or less visible going on in the kind of operational research domain. So that's something to think about. Great. Thanks ever so much, Sonia and Sonia's team. Uh, now, uh, Francis, have you got some feedback from your group? Hi. Yeah, we were a group uh, of seven. Um, and I, I cocked up the system because I missed someone off, didn't realise that we were all there. Hey ho. Uh, we're quite international, Brazil and Sweden, as well as the UK, uh, all working from home, very mixed experiences across the board. Um, some people had gone back to live with families. Um, some people, uh, one person had a um, four-year-old child. I think it was only one, one, of, one of us had a young child. The rest were either living with uh, adults or myself were teenagers. Um, so we shared those experiences. We, we finished with uh, what has been helpful. And I think for me, the thing that struck me was the setting up a place to work. I mean, I'm quite random, I'll work anywhere. But for some of, some of the people in the group, it seemed to really help them to find, you know, to, to organise a space to work. I think two people said they tried to organise their place of work 
to be just like their workplace and they found that that really helped them. Uh, setting up regular breaks so if at work you've been used to going to the tea stand and getting getting a cup of tea then actually trying to replicate that so there was an element of trying to replicate normal working conditions as best as best you could at home on the other oh, hand i'm gonna to have to ask you to uh, yeah, i've only got a couple more other people um, appreciated the ability to work flexibly they felt much more connected than they did before um but there was a note of needing to take time off and to get that balance for example uh, improving sleep to help with issues such as anxiety great thanks so much francis and francis team nicola no you're still no, no, i'm back um so we were talking about um what next what are the issues for or and um, women in or in what the new normal will be so we spent just time quickly talking about what the new normal might be and we focused a lot on the how stuff might be so social distancing may lead to more working from home we then also went on to talk about relationship building and how that might work in the new in the new world so people talking about building new relationships that they they perhaps haven't they wouldn't alternatively have done um, but just lots of interesting things in there maybe having a less of a commute more leisure time for people um, when we moved then into talking about that in the context of um, issues for OR, um, we talked about lots of opportunity possibly for OR as a discipline, um, and I guess it links into some of the points about the crisis. Um, some people talked about thrivers guilt, so because there's this data rich environment, there's so much support that OR can be giving and providing. Um, but maybe in the risk area related to OR, it's thinking about the cohort, the cohort of students that might be coming through um, will be different to the ones that have previously come through and what that might mean. Um, we talked more about the transition from university into the workplace, but that could equally be from school into the university system. Um, and then we didn't have enough time, so we covered some things. And so the people that were in the syndicate, please send in um, the other thoughts that you had that we didn't get time to get round to. When we thought about how that might tra translate for women, we acknowledge the fact that there's a reduction in publications by women just now. And if you move that forward, then I think the way the academic system works, that translates into how you progress in your career, doesn't it? So there could be a, a stalling there for female progression in academia. And then a really fascinating point was when we're thinking about not going back to the workplace because homeworking works better for home life balance and everything. When you think about visibility and how that might work in this new world it's actually the people that go back into the office um, that are more visible and are there for those water cooler um, comments so there's there's like an oxymoron and a threat and an opportunity in the same space and then that's as much as we managed to get through so please send in the other ideas that we didn't talk about please that's us yeah thank you very much i think there's been a lot of overlap between those groups and between other, the final report back is from my group, uh, which was do women have it harder than men uh, and sharing personal experiences. And I think we've, we've covered a lot of common ground and the, the, the people in the group did not answer the question uh, in, in, as to whether women have it harder than men. Uh, there seemed general consensus that women uh, potentially you might want to put it make it harder for themselves than, than men in that they will take greater responsibility for or feel greater responsibility for getting everything right for the family for the home for anybody that they're caring for and so uh, all of the people in our group had very sympathetic employers uh, to whom they could talk uh, and it was a journey of getting the support from the employer that was needed in order to uh, address the issues that they had uh, with, um, uh, with with care. So again, a privileged group of people, but all uh, dealing with uh, very similar difficult issues. So I'm going to leave it at that because what we really, really did want to get out of this uh, this event was an opportunity for what uh, Sophie, when we were discussing this early, called the coffee queue or the random meetings. We're not going to get very long. I think we've probably got five minutes. 
uh, when Amy, I hope, is going to assign us randomly into groups. Amy, could you hold up number of fingers for how many people will be in the group? Two, three, four? Do you know? Four. Four. Okay, and you're going to get five minutes. So in that, that gives us, it might even not be quite five minutes by the time I finish talking. So assuming it is five minutes uh, or four minutes, you get three quarters of a minute to talk about yourself, what uh, you are doing now. So people can see your name, just say, this is what you're doing now. And then demonstrate a desk stretch exercise that you want to share with the group. And then we will all return and hopefully we can all do our new desk stretch exercises. So, um, and you, this is where you should have handy something along these lines and pretend you're in a, you're in a blacket lecture. While you're, while you're seeing this final slide, which says, we will be trying to write up this meeting as soon as possible. And facilitators, uh, it would be really helpful if you could send your notes if you've got them in, in, in uh, written form. Uh, Nicola and Francis will take forward ideas for the OR Society and uh, Women's, uh, Women OR and Analytics Network. Uh, Tati, could you launch the final poll? Uh, please, and uh, that's just to get your immediate feedback, but we, you will be getting a survey monkey feedback request. Um, but we'd like to say if you're not a member of Waran, please join. Um, right, so if you just tell us what was the best bit and what shouldn't we do next time. So if we can just, uh, if those of you who wish to leave at um, half past five, uh, I'm sure that you will uh, you will go as and when you need to. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, but if Tati, if as the voting takes place, if you could share uh, some of the feedback and that'll give us an immediate feel about whether this is something that really is worth uh, trying again soon or whether um, it's a, it's a one-off for this time in, in our COVID lives. Um, you but, have uh, the results in that, so I'll share that. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So uh, what this suggests, thank you all very much for, for feeding that back. Uh, it's just if we can, uh, if we can look in more detail at your, your more complete feedback, which I hope you will all send when you get the uh, emailed request for survey monkey feedback, uh, we'll see what we can do for a month or so's time. And uh, if we're not too exhausted by that. So have a, have a safe journey home, as they say, to the next room or wherever it is that you're, um, you're, you're working from. Uh, don't forget those stretches and um, thanks ever so much to everybody. Bye.